when we talk about the pathogen, there are a lot of different things we can talk about in here. We say the pathogen is the disease-causing organism. We will study how to be able to look at the pathogen. When we talk about a parasite, we talk about something that obtains nutrients from a host. By definition, if it is a parasite, it will be a pathogen. But not all pathogens are parasites. And that's one thing that we have to be able to understand. We have saprophytes. A saprophyte obtains nutrients from non-living organic matter. But a saprophyte can be a pathogen if it does something to alter the physiology of the host plant itself. We study this in a thing we call etiology, which is the way we determine what allows us to consider something as a pathogen. We'll look at that when we get into Koch's postulates. With the pathogen, some of the terms we can use is it can be infectious or transmitted, or it could be non-infectious, which means it's not transmitted. There are certain things that are non-infectious type diseases. There are certain types of diseases that are very easily transmitted from one spot to another. We have pathogens that are biotic, and therefore they are living. When we deal with living things, we have to look at what characterizes life forms, and we will when we start looking at viruses. These include reproduction, adaptation, organization, whether or not they contain nucleic acids, and whether or not they have metabolism. We also have abiotic things, which are non-living, and these include things like viruses. Viruses unto themselves are not infectious until you have a vector that transmits them from one host to another. When we talk about pathogens, we talk about signs. Now, we just went in there about symptoms, which are alterations of the physiology of the host that result in a change in morphology. A sign, by definition, is a structure of the pathogen. So therefore, when you see a structure of the pathogen, it allows you to identify what this is. When we look at this apple, you can see the green stuff on the outside. Those are structures of the pathogen. You take them out, you look at them under a microscope, and you can identify them. And this would be identified most likely as penicillium expansum. These are leaves of crepe myrtle. And what you see is this white mass on the outside. This is going to be an oidium that is going to allow us to identify it, and it is structures of the pathogen. These are sclerotia on this green bean, and I know it doesn't look like a green bean, but it is. These are sclerotia, and these allow it to be very readily identified, and this is sclerotium rolfsii. Over here, this is a piece of tissue where you can see exudation of bacteria from the inside of it. And that is a sign that we have a bacterial pathogen. And from that, we could identify what pathogen it is. Over here, we've got a nematode. And the nematode allows us to identify that as a pathogen. The other part we talked about is the environment. And the environment comes out in our disease triangle as a very important part. And the environment really speaks to a couple of things that become very important to us, which are basically temperature and moisture. In order to have disease on plants, you have to have the proper temperature regime, you have to have the proper moisture regime. And therefore, temperature and moisture become very important.